Let us bless each other. Evangelist, we say this world. For two, three, seven nations, we will be covered at the last of the world. The first world. Why his idols and who will save this world by his words? And with his words, Galatians chapter 3, verse 1 to 14, with the title By Faith or By Works of the Law, I will deliver the message. Every time we greet each other, we need to head for it. 100,000 saints. And when we go to the 100,000 people, we must check by ourselves that it's done by faith or done by the works of the law. I want to share this message to you with this title. Have you ever any uh, had anyone who committed sins or um, makes mistakes repeatedly? No. I do you look at them. When God sees you, how does God look at you? And the book of Genesis, chapter 1, God, God called Abraham. With God called Abraham, that was the time that Abraham was saved. And he gave a covenant to him. And then he said that the new was to spread his gospel throughout the nations. Then Abraham repeatedly make mis made mistakes and fallen so many times. All these repeated mistakes and sins, how do you think that God looks at, them, at him? And we can see, we can think of that King David, even non-believers know David. He's uh, the best king of the world, and his this small nation was well known uh, through the works of David. Even the believers knew him very well. He's very great king, and he is a great servant of God, and he was very great servant of God. Uh, the second Samuel, Samuel chapter 11, David committed sins, especially verse 27. Before the, his eyes, his, um, what he was doing was evil. So the prophet Nathan uh, talked about his sins, and David immediately committed and repented his sins and returned to God again. Today, we're going to check the part that we are doing things by faith or by the law. When we are heading for this 1,000, 100,000 people, God is pouring all the blessings and opening the door for us to enter. So many people will see us doing something. And you and I must be prepared by the law, by, by the covenant, by the gospel. And through this passage today, we must think carefully about this title, by faith or by the work of the law. First of all, our thoughts, our eyes, we must check where our thoughts and our eyes and our words are. We must first think about this. First, one says, 
Or is saying to the people in Galatians, foolish Galatians, what is the reason that he said this? He was crucified on the cross and he gave us salvation, and Jesus Christ is the one who did it. And before your eyes, you can see Jesus Christ was crucified, and you are doing something wrong, and you are deceived by something wrong. And he is rebuking people in Galatians. And the people, the saints in Galatians, he is delivering very important messages. We are living by the law, and we are abiding the law by the law. As Christians, that's a sure thing for as a Christian. Non believers might see us doing. Um, whether we are abiding by the law or not. James chapter 1 verse 25 But the one who looks into the perfect law, the perfect liberty, and preserves being no hearer who forgets but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. It's surely written like this. When we listen to the messages, and we, we must not forget and we must put things into practice. Then it's talking about the law. James chapter 2 verse 20 says, For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from the work is dead. As it's about the attitude of Christians. As we have the faith and the gospel, people in the world would not see any gospel in us. They are just looking at how we behave and what we are doing. Now, we are, if, if we are perfect or no flaws in us morally and ethically, of course, we need to sustain this life abiding by the law all the time. Also, it is important, it is necessary for us to keep this law. And we may have children and the infant kids. As a parent, you must think about how to raise your children. Um, when they reach the age five, they don't listen to their parents. They just want to what they want. And they reach, when they reach the fourth grade in the elementary school, they become rebellious. They don't actually listen to the parents a lot. When they reach the two year and the middle school, and they are um, they're more like rebellious that even some people might say that the, the Korean organization also reported that the North Korea either Kim Jong Un even do not attack the Korea because of this second year in the middle schoolers. And some the opposite cases are there. Some children, they listen to their parents, married and having a job. They never give any troubles to their parents. Some might say this, they've never become rebellious to their parents. And in the field, also, I've heard a lot about these children. They might be just AI. How can it be that? Ephesians chapter 6, 4, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Do I make children angry or vice versa? Most of people are living like this. 
children do not abide by the law. Of course, in my case, the same thing. When I was in middle school and high school, I need to keep the book Lord, but I want to be very rebellious against my parents. Uh, it's the same thing with your first family chief. It will be great if we abide by the law. Well, and we listen to uh, keep this law all the time. Heresies and they do see They pursue the perfect life, keeping the law. There's no flaw. They even do not think about committing the sins against the law. The all the Jewish people, they respected the Pharisees and Sadducees. When they passed by, then all the Israel people greeted them and nailed them before them, and they just served them as their teachers. They pretend to have this perfect life. And all the Pharisees, scribes, and Sadducees, and the Lord is giving them the curse. There is no flaw in them in their life. To this respectful Pharisees, scribes, and Sadducees, he, he, God is giving the cursing words. Wait to 23 verse 13. But all to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you set the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. For you neither enter yourselves nor allow those who would enter to go in. And you must better take on these words. It's very fearful words. They neither enter themselves into the kingdoms nor allow those who would enter to go in. They are stopping people from hearing the gospel. How fearful this sin would be. What it was say is worse than this. Their life, their law is perfect, but Jesus said that it's wrong. Matthew chapter 12 is talking, keep talking about um, crises on them. Why is this? Perfect. Bloodless. With this law, they are equipped with a law. There is nothing wrong with them. But why Jesus said it? You'll be cursed. You must think about this carefully with his words. Second, where am I standing on? You must check where you are standing on. Where are we standing on? You must check. Always you trap yourself with the law and you treat people with the gospel. That will be great, but we are doing it completely the opposite. If they are keeping the law all the time, they will treat people with the law. And if they are in the gospel, and they treat people with the gospel. You must check by which you are made of. Then you will bear the fruit according to what you do in print in your heart. In your thoughts, there is no choice but to bear fruits from the gospel, fruits of the gospel. When you are in the gospel, the Pharisees and scribes, there is no gospel but only the perfect law. They will bear our curses. 
Colossians chapter 3 verse 24 So then the law was our God guardian until Christ came in order that we might be justified by faith. He's talking about the law and he's talking about the guardian. What is, what is the meaning of the guardian in all Bible? Version of the Bible is talking about the that, uh, the guardian self is a tutor. The Greeks in great, uh, Greece, uh, the noble families uh, hire the teacher for their children from or their children aged from 5 to 15 and they chose their tutors among the slaves and they let them as their, their children and when this child grew up and became an adult and this guardian will become a slave again and temporarily he became a teacher and then will turn into a slave again. What does this mean? Galatians chapter 3 verse 24 has very important meaning in itself. We are and we can realize that we are committing sins by this law and we listen to the gospel and through Jesus Christ we are saved and we became very justified and we are staying within the gospel. It's talking of that we need. We never need any law. By the time we meet Christ Jesus, the gospel itself is perfect and everything. There's no nothing in need. Jesus Christ, the gospel, and his words are perfect and everything and you know it's talking about this. Which one is favor? The law and the gospel? It's uncomparable thing that the gospel is much bigger than the law, his covenant, his word, and everything is in his words. We will have this 10,000, 100,000 people will come into this church, and we must be ready for the gospel and must share the only gospel. Verse 11 says that now it is evident that no one is justified before God by the law, for the righteous shall live by faith. It is written. Haggai 2 verse 4 and that they will be righteous in the law in, by their faith. And we are justified by faith. It is sure written in the Bible. When you read the Bible, and all whether it's on the Old Testament or New Testament, it's about they are talking about righteousness. And in New Testament also it says about it talks about the righteousness. They are not talking about whether people are righteous or not. And it's not judged by the, the eyes of the people. It's talking about Jesus Christ, the gospel, and the covenant. So whenever you read the gospel, when you see this word righteous, righteousness, then you must think, you must apply this to the Christ. Then you can realize the, the contents of the meaning. My judgment, my righteousness must not apply it to this because they are followed into self-centered mind. Done by my righteousness, by what I'm doing, 
then they just started judging people around them. Then how come we can be saved like, uh, uh, like sinners? We are making mistakes a lot and how come we can how can we be saved? We are saved by the gospel and we must save people by the gospel. If you judge people, if you want to curse people, then you cannot realize this content of the of his words. You must save people by the the words of God. Everyone must be saved by the words of Jesus Christ. You always committing sins and making mistakes, falling in and uh, facing failures and whether you are poor or rich or well educated or not educated we must save those people in gospel and according to the bible to Abraham God gave this gospel from the beginning and he let God let him spread the gospel to the Gentiles. We are to die by the law. We, the eyes of the law, no one can be saved by the law. Even one, by your righteousness, no one can be saved. Only by the gospel. By His grace, by the by the faith, God is giving us this salvation. And this kind of people, like approximately 100,000 people will come to this church to listen to his words. And Jesus Christ that perfect in the gospel and the law it's the kind of uh, the things with a tutor or guardian. The gospel is Jesus Christ. That is righteousness. Being righteousness. That is that refers to Jesus Christ. You are saved as his children. And who will be glorified will be holy. It's a theological term that will be called the child of God. But one accident, we are saved and being holy, being glorified by doing His words. It was not done just one time. After being saved for a long time, we must uh, put ourselves imprinted, have ourselves imprinted with His words. Then we can be holy and glorified. And this term, being holy, means it is delivering the grace of God by His grace. We can become holy. The more we enter into the gospel, the more we can experience the grace. From time to time, the senior pastor uh, give these words like, "It will be done by the gospel." Don't do it by yourself, but after listening to the gospel and realize this gospel and experience this gospel, then it will, everything will be done. That is the gospel. Do not judge what others are doing. You must enter deeply into the gospel and everything will be done. After listening to his words, and God will let us um, filled with the Holy Spirit. 
So being with the, be filled with the Holy Spirit, then we can get into the true gospel. A grateful your child will listen to your words uh, well and uh, very being matured all the time uh, quickly, but it takes time for it to understand what you are saying. Uh, the church members will listen to the gospel and they imprint the gospel well and deeply into their thoughts. But Sometimes, some people, you might see some people um, who do not understand the gospel well and very, they are very slow learners. So we need to wait for them to realize the gospel and experience the gospel. God is making us like God is making us, God is making others in the gospel. That is being holy. That is the gospel. Where are we stepping on? Stepping on the law or on the gospel? With 100,000 people around us, we might see so many uh, weird things happening around us, and some people might have, are suffering from very serious disease, mental illnesses. They might scream in the church. But how can we see them? Where do you think your words and your thoughts and your eyes are or must be? We must stand on the gospel. Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Christ is the solution of all problems. In a correct way to say that God is solving all the problems that we have, we are on the journey of solving the problems with the help of help of God. Help of God. So you must imprint the gospel into your heart and calming your nature. And one day, Saint Epistle said to me that that's the gospel. Then I was very happy to hear this comment that what if he just had said that it is the law but luckily he said that it, that's the gospel and I knew that, that I made mistakes and sometimes I um, skip things a lot and I skip things a lot Sometimes I don't report very present things. It's like a person who is who wants to do things well, but like uh, keep making mistakes. And when I see this, all the pastors and assistant pastors, they are all in the gospel. No matter what happens, they are in, within the gospel. It's everything done by the gospel, even though they make mistakes a lot, that is the gospel, then they will be very great. That is the people of gospel. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 15 said rather speaking the truth in love you are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ. We are to grow in every way into him. That is a journey of the gospel. A new uh, see people doing, then they might make mistakes. Then, but you must wait and must pray for him, pray for them. You must grow with the gospel 
and you must grow up with the gospel to, into him. That is where we must be. It doesn't really matter what happened and what uh, things you've done. Somehow, at some point, then you might make mistakes and you uh, keep doing something wrong. That's okay. You, have, you raise your children and they are making mistakes. They don't listen to you. They give you a hard time. Sometimes they listen to you, but they are very stubborn not to listen to your words. Then you might say, that, oh, why do I have these children for a short of time? But you must wait with the gospel. And you might say that my child, my children listen to my words very well and never give me any hard time. But you might have a very uh, bigger one later on. You must wear the gospel. You must gain the strength from the gospel. That's the uh, spiritual cross. Being holy cannot be done at once right away, but you must get into the gospel and you must wait. You must take a check where you must stand. You must meditate on these words. Let's come to the conclusion. Because of the law, if you judge others, and if you criticize others, you cannot get the blessings of 100,000 people coming to this church. And church members, they are not perfect at all. So you must see this, these people through the eyes of the gospel. And you must wait for them to come to the words of God. You must give them the opportunity to return to the Lord. Romans chapter 8 verse 1 to 2. Romans chapter 7 verse 25 verse 24 25. Rich, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks to God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, then, I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. That is the just definition of the law. Therefore, Romans chapter 8 verse 1 to 2, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Jesus Christ from the law of sin and death. That is his, his faith and his perfect law, perfect, uh, perfect gospel. You might be very discouraged, you might feel guilty when you deliver the gospel, but it's not. You are righteous. It's not what other people in the world say. So many people try to be righteous in the eye from before the eyes of others, but that's not the gospel. And I can. I can understand why they are doing this because I can see them through the eyes of the gospel. They might see this, they might do this. And gospel can do anything. You might say that you can be saved by yourself. For Paul and David, when they 
May the perfect gospel be indeed established the word of God and worthy of evangelization. And the people are coming to this church and there are many people those are the ones who committed sins or making mistakes but you cannot judge others. If, if ever anyone who is flawless and the gospel in the law or they are not doing anything wrong but they are still doomed to be cursed because they are perfect in the law that is the sin where do you think we all the church members must stand on you must stand on the gospel for me saving all the nations and 70 fields and you must enjoy the blessings of the missionaries in the name of Jesus Christ let us pray Father God thank that people cannot be saved by the law but by the gospel we need the gospel through the gospel we want to save so many people during this week we want to gain this victorious week through the gospel as an evangelist. I pray in Jesus' holy wonderful name. Amen.